Welcome to Hymn Stories, a podcast about how our songs of the faith came to be and how they have encouraged, comforted, and strengthened believers like you and me. Hymn Stories is a part of the Media Gratia Podcast Network. My name is Ryan Bush. One of Philip Doddridge's most enduring hymns is called, O Happy Day That Fixed My Choice. O happy day that fixed my choice On thee, my Savior and my God Well may this glowing heart rejoice And tell its raptures all abroad This hymn is a simple expression of the joy found in the good news of Jesus Christ. This joy arrests all those who are in Christ. Even the most noblest minds feel the worth of the simplest truths of the gospel. That may be why His Royal Highness Prince Albert, the consort of Queen Victoria, chose this hymn to be used always as a confirmation hymn in the royal family. This hymn was once the means of bringing peace to an anxious soul, The story was told by an English writer. He said, It was my happiness some time ago to be a guest in the home of a family for several days. One morning, I saw a young woman, one of the servants, in the deepest exercise of soul about her salvation. I heard her singing the fourth verse of Doddridge's hymn, Now rest my long divided heart, fixed on this blissful center rest, with ashes who would grudge to part, when called on angels' food to feast. I saw her troubled. She told me that she felt she had not loved God enough, or prayed enough, or wept enough. I knew she was occupying her mind about herself, and that she did not see what Christ was. I remarked that self was mere ashes. I asked, Why not part with the condemned, doomed ashes of self and believe in Jesus? She gave no answer. A day later, it was during the time of family worship, I saw her countenance completely change from its old sadness into happiness and joy. And I thought, what a transformation is taking place in that mind. And wishing to know for myself, I called her aside into the drawing room. I said, you seem happy now. She replied, I am happy. What has made you happy? Oh, I did just what you told me to. I put myself down to the third chapter of John. What do you mean? Why, there where it says... God so loved the world. Yes, but was that a world of saints or angels? No. What was it then? A world of sinners. And then I put myself down in that world, and I found God loved me and had given his son for me. Jonathan Edwards wrote, Be always greatly abased for your remaining sin, and never think that you lie low enough for it, but yet don't be at all discouraged or disheartened by it, for though we are exceedingly sinful, yet we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous, the preciousness of whose blood, and the merit of whose righteousness, and the greatness of whose love and faithfulness does infinitely overtop the highest mountains of our sin. The best of our hymns teach us to strike this balance. It's true that all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. It's also true that Christ has appeared to take away sin. As we read the scriptures, we sigh when our wickedness and the cost of our salvation is made clear to us. We are comforted, however, because despite our ungodliness, we were made the objects of God's mercy, while Christ was the object of his wrath and this for love. 
Charles Spurgeon said, Let this one great, gracious, glorious fact lie in your spirit till it perfumes all your thoughts and makes you rejoice even though you are without strength. Seeing the Lord Jesus has become your strength in your song. Yea, he has become your salvation. According to the scriptures, it is a revealed fact that in due time Christ died for the ungodly when they were yet without strength. Thank you for joining me in this episode of Hymn Stories. May the Lord bless you and keep you as you sing and make melody in your heart to Him.